Hello students, let's continue with our journey to know more about English speech sounds. In this session, I am going to talk about classification and description of consonantal sounds. But first, let's recapitulate what we have done. Uh, students, in the first session on speech mechanism, we have get ourselves familiarized how the speech mechanism is formed, how the three systems, the respiratory, the phonatory and the articulatory work together in the production and transmission of speech sounds. We have discussed in detail the structure and function of respiratory system where the airstream mechanism initiates the process of speech production. In the second session on speech mechanism, we have discussed how this airstream is processed at larynx in the phonatory system, which is called the voice box because of the vocal cords, which play an important role in articulation of voiced and voiceless sounds. We had also discussed about the glottis, which is the open space between the two vocal cords. And in the third and the final session on speech, speech mechanism, the role of articulatory system has been explained with a special reference to the categ two categories of the sounds, oral and nasal, which are, um, which are there just because of the changing position of the soft palate, uh, which also act as a valve. Um, in the uh, in the production of the uh, processing of the uh, speech sounds in the articulatory system and finally we had a brief discussion about the active and passive articulators uh, um, and their role in the mod modification of the airstream to give final shape to a sound and um, lastly we have just tried to uh, understand the broad phonemic categories of sounds, vowels and consonants that how when the air uh, um, from the lungs escapes freely, continuously through the mouth, those sounds are categorized as vowels and when this air from the lungs does not escape escape freely or continuously or through the mouth, those sounds are categorized as consonants but uh, this much classification is not sufficient to capture the um, accuracy uh, uh, or to get to be more perfect in the pronunciation or in the articulation of these very sounds. It needs subclassification. So today we'll focus upon the consonantal sounds. And now the question is that we have the two broad categories, um, vowels and consonants. So why subclassification is needed? Because it's a general fact that sounds are described not by how they sound to hear, but rather how they are produced at the vocal track. And in English, it is more important to focus on the production of the um, uh, articulation of the sounds because uh, there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between the system of writing and the system of pronunciation. As we all know, there are 26 letters in English alphabet, but the sounds are 44 in number. As you are all familiar, there are five vowels in English alphabet, but when we count the vowel sounds, they are 20 in number. Then same is with the consonants. In alphabet, there are 21 letters who are categorized as consonants, but when the consonantal sounds are counted, they are 24. So um, the classification of sounds into two phonetic categories is not sufficient. I'll repeat, it, need, it, it, it is imperative for us to know more about that how the, all the uh, consonants, although they are categorized 
as the sounds which are produced when the air from the lungs does not escape freely but but they are not similar all the consonantal sounds are not similar for example when we articulate k the air from the lungs does not escape continuously for a fraction of second the air that comes out of the lungs is imprisoned in the mouth because the back of the tongue touches the velum or the soft palate and that closes the oral passage for air completely and the air escapes only when the back of the tongue is removed from the velum and then there is the sound s when we articulate the sound s the air from the lungs does not escape freely as it has happened with the articulation of k sound now why it is so this is because the here the reason is different why the lung air is not escaping freely this is because the blade of the tongue is brought very close to the teeth ridge so the oral passage becomes very narrow here and the air escapes with a lot of friction so when we articulate these two sounds k or s as i have just done we know they are consonants because the air is not escaping freely the air is getting modified but they are different they are different consonants because these two sound these two sounds uh, do not sound alike so to know more about these differences let's attempt a sub classification of consonants and uh, to uh, to classify the consonants or to describe a consonant fully we have to know six factors about their articulation number 1 what is the air stream mechanism which air stream mechanism is used students if you remember while in the first session on speech mechanism we have discussed in detail about three air stream mechanisms and i have told you in detail that the pulmonic air aggressive air stream mechanism is used in the production of all english sounds then secondly the six second factor which is Uh, to be taken into account for the classification or for the description of the consonant is what is the state of glottis glottis as we have done earlier glottis means the space between the vocal cords so and as we have discussed in the session on the articulatory system that the vocal cords they are uh, they, they are so structured that they can take number of positions and the positions they take it influences the way they modify the um, the air to to give shape to the sounds we have discussed uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the um, that the how the vocal cords can be held wide open then when the air can pass freely through them and the sounds uh, the sounds which are produced with this this very uh, opened vocal cords they are called uh, voice voice less sounds and then we have also discussed that how when the vocal cords vibrate they are held loosely together the sounds that are produced they are called voice sounds so this is the state of the glottis which decides that whether a sound is voiced or voiceless so this should also be taken into account then the third is the position of the soft palate that we have discussed in while talking about articulatory system that the how the soft palate acts as a wall and it just Uh, when how when it is raised or how when it is lowered the the a sound uh, gets nasal or oral then fourthly uh, what is the active articulator which uh, part of the body which part of the oral uh, vocal tract is in movement in the production of a sound that is also 
very important to know and what is the passive articulator that is also important and lastly what is the structure involved so this is all in about the six factors which we need to know while classifying or describing a consonant sound and, and the the basic information about the airstream mechanism the state of glottis and the position of soft palate you can um, get the details in the video lectures on the speech mechanism uh, students for a better understanding of the these six factors which help us in classifying or describing a consonant sounds there is an illustration for you on your screen that how the sound p which is the initial sound in the word post or past um, how we can classify it in terms of the six factors we have just discussed the first factor is what is the airstream mechanism so when we pronounce the sound p the airstream mechanism which is used is pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism means the air which we breathe out the air which escapes from our lungs and as we have already discussed that all the english speech sounds are produced with pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism now the second factor is that when we pronounce the sound p what is the state of glottis so when we say p the vocal cords are far away from each other they don't vibrate so this sound is voiceless then the third factor is about the position of the soft palate which acts as a valve so when we say p you can feel this very uh, thing that when we say p the soft palate is raised and it touches the back wall of the pharynx and then so the nasal passage is closed so it's an oral sound p then when we uh, articulate p the lower lip is in movement the lower lip touches the upper lip p so and upper lip it remains passive so upper lip is the passive articulator and lower lip is the active articulator now the structure what is the structure involved student structure means the relationship between the active and passive articulator i repeat what is the structure structure is the term which is used for the relationship between the active articulator and the passive articulator during the articulation of a particular sound so when we articulate p what happens both the articulators the lower lip and upper lip they there is a complete closure and then suddenly there is the release of air so the relationship is that of complete closure and sudden release and as a result when there is sudden release of air what happens the sound is just produced with a burst so it's a plosive sound so the sounds which are pronounced when the structure is complete of complete closure and sudden release it is called plosive so this is how these six factors help us in classifying or describing a particular sound and on the basis of these six factors there are uh, three uh, major dimensions which we have to be keep in mind for a uh, for a clear understanding of the articulation of a particular consonantal sound they are number 1 the place of articulation means from which place that particular sound is articulated for example we have just done p in, in the p sound is articulated at the, by the lips both the lips are in movement so the place of articulation for the p sound is are both the lips so the knowledge of the place of articulation is important secondly manner of articulation means how the articulators are acting how this articulation is taking place and thirdly voicing voicing is related again with the uh, state of the glottis means whether it is a voiceless sound or it is a voice sound so these three dimensions they are 
important to know to classify or describe a consonant sign here i'll repeat about these major dimensions the place of articulation specifies what the active and passive articulators are during the articulation of a speech sound secondly the manner of articulation tells the kind of closer or narrowing involved in the production of a sound or we can say the manner of articulation is the stricture that's what we have done just now in the previous slide then thirdly the voicing the voicing parameter specifies whether the vocal cords are vibrating or not during the articulation of a particular sound so students uh, this is all about the uh, factors which help us in classifying a consonantal sound and the three major dimensions which help us to get command over the accurate articulation of the consonantal sounds in the next video lecture i am going to talk about all uh, 24 consonantal sounds with reference to the three major dimensions which we have just discussed thank you